Many of you probably wonder, what is Bitcoin and why does it have value? Well, let me explain Bitcoin to you like you're five years old. Now, imagine a seashell lying on the beach. That seashell happens to fall through a hole and into my hand. I give my seashell to you. You have one seashell and I have zero. Simple, right? Now let's look closely at what happened. I put my seashell in your hand. We both know it was real. We experienced it. Did we need a third person to confirm that this transfer occurred? No, we didn't. So what does this mean? Well, easy. The seashell is now yours. I can't give you another seashell because I gave you my only one. I am officially seashellless. You are currently in full control of that seashell. You can give it to a friend or family member, and they can give it to someone else, and so on. Or you could leave it at the beach. The choice is yours, and no one can make that decision for you. That's how an in-person exchange works. It doesn't matter what the object is, whether it's a diamond, a penny, or a paperclip. It will follow the same process. In the past, seashells were used as a medium of exchange. In China, carries were so significant that many characters relating to money or trade contained carry characters. 3,000 years ago, carry shells or copies of the seashells were used as Chinese currency. Nevertheless, it's time to get back on track. Let's say I have one digital seashell. Here, take it. Now there's a bit of a problem. How would you know that I didn't duplicate the digital seashell before sending it to you? Just think about it for a second. It's a bit more complicated than just handing you the physical seashell, right? How do you know I didn't send the same seashell to my grandma on Facebook Messenger? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Who knows? You surely wouldn't know, only I would. Perhaps I saved the digital seashell to a flash drive, put it in a jar and buried it under the ground. Or I put the seashell on the internet. Now it's a popular meme that millions of people are sharing across the globe. Now you can see that this digital exchange has some significant flaws. Sending digital seashells is not the same as sending physical seashells. The problem has a name. It's called the double spending problem. But you won't have to worry about this. Just know the smartest computer scientists in the world couldn't solve it for decades. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Instead, we can think of a solution together. This is a ledger. Since it also needs to be digital, this ledger will have to live in cyberspace and have someone in charge of it. This ledger is where you record your transactions. An easy way to say, an accounting book. Let's track our digital seashells on this ledger. Now, take Minecraft, the single most popular game on the planet with over 126 million users. Say the people over at Mojang, the creators of Minecraft, have a digital ledger that tracks the number of diamonds players give to one another. That solves the problem, right? Mojang can keep track of our seashells just like they keep track of diamonds. This is great! Wrong. There's a bit of a problem. What if someone at Mojang wanted to create some more digital seashells? Well, they could. No one's stopping them from adding more seashells into existence whenever they feel the need. Now imagine the people at Mojang did this to the diamond spawn rate. Well, they wouldn't be the rarest mineral anymore. Diamonds would be just as valuable as coal and the players would walk right by them. Here's the second problem. Think back to when I first gave you my seashell. It was just you and me. Imagine we have to have the people at Mojang there to hold our hands and verify the ledger every time there was an exchange. That's not very efficient, is it? How can I hand my digital seashell over to you? You know, the usual way. Well, here's a solution. What if we gave this ledger to everybody instead of a single ledger living on a third party's computer? Everyone involved would have a copy. All the transactions that have ever happened from all time in digital seashells are recorded on everyone's ledger. You can't cheat it. I can't send you digital seashells I don't have. If I did, it wouldn't sync up with everyone in the system. It would be a tough system to beat, especially if you need to change hundreds of thousands of other ledgers. As the system gets bigger, it also gets harder to hack or take control of. Plus, it's decentralized. So I know no one can decide to give himself more digital seashells. The rules of the system were defined at the beginning. The code and rules are open source. It's there for smart people to contribute to, maintain, secure, improve, and check on. You could participate in this network and update the ledger to make sure it all checks out. 
In fact, that's the only way to create more digital seashells in the system. For the trouble, you could get some digital seashells as a reward. But that system just explained exists. It's called the Bitcoin protocol. And all those digital seashells are the Bitcoin within the system. So did you see what happened? What does this public ledger enable? It's open source, remember? The rules define the total supply of Bitcoin that will exist in the system. I know the exact amount that will ever be created. When I make an exchange, I can certify that the Bitcoin left my possession and is now entirely yours. Because it's a public ledger, I didn't need a third party to make sure I didn't cheat. In other words, it behaves like a physical object. But you know what's cool? It's still digital. We can now deal with 1,000 Bitcoin or 1 million Bitcoin, or even a tiny fraction of Bitcoin. I can send it with the click of a button. And I can drop it in your pocket if I was in Panama and you were all the way in New York. I can even make other digital things right on top of this digital Bitcoin. It's digital after all. Maybe I can attach some text on it, a digital note. I can perhaps connect other digital files, like a contract, a stock certificate, or an ID card. So this is great. How should we treat or value these digital Bitcoin? They're quite useful, aren't they? Well, a lot of people are arguing over it now. There are ongoing debates between this and that politician, between Twitter trolls and between programmers. Make sure not to listen to all of them, though. Some people are smart. Some are misinformed. Some say the system is valuable. Some say it's worth zero. Some say it will become digital gold. Some a currency. But now you know more about Bitcoin than most people. So you can come to your own conclusions.